Hi, this is Jeff. Welcome back to the channel. We're going to follow up to our Daystar Quark Chromosphere eyepiece box opening we did back in January. I'm going to show you some of the reasons why we observe the sun, sun layers, what we can do as amateurs, and the various filtering that I'm using to observe the sun. So let's dive in. Let's take a look at the sun, the layers of the sun, and what amateur observers can look at when we're viewing the sun. First, a word of caution. Please do not engage in observing the sun lightheartedly. Make sure you're using the proper filtration on either the front end of the scope or the chromosphere eyepiece. In this case, goes back on the eyepiece end of the scope. Make sure you're using the proper filtration. Make sure you're using it correctly. And make sure when you change gear, change pieces, change observing configurations, that you are being cautious it's always a good idea to move the scope away from the sun. You can damage your vision if you improperly use the filtering devices that you have, or if you engage in unfiltered observing of the sun, especially through a telescope. So please be mindful, be cautious, use the right gear and use it correctly. So what can amateur astronomers see when observing the sun? We have multiple filtration devices to use, but primarily we use white light filters and hydrogen alpha filters. The white light filter focuses on the photosphere. The photosphere is largely going to show us sunspots and you can see granularity in the sun's surface, the photosphere surface. The second filter we use is the hydrogen alpha filter. The hydrogen alpha filter will reveal to the observer details in the chromosphere and prominences. The chromosphere detail will show solar flares, filaments, and other active regions in the chromosphere surface of the sun. And if you want to see the solar corona, there's only one way to do that. You have to be in the middle of the total eclipse happening on April 8th, 2024. I hope to see you under a clear sky on that day. I use my white light filter. It's a wider field of view. You got to remember the Daystar Quark has a 4X Barlow in it. So that's going to magnify your focal length by four times and it's going to shrink your field of view. So it can be hard to find the sun if you start off with this. So the way I start off and find the sun, I don't have a, a you can get the finder scope, solar finder scopes, but in my case, I have no problem using a white light filter with a 40 millimeter Teleview Plossel. This is a native focal length of about 560 millimeters, I believe. and. I use the shadow technique on the, on the ground to help center the sun. And so here's our shadow. So you can see, we're just gonna go back and forth and I just go back and forth in a manner. I find you know, one really differentiating, in this case, it's generally these two knobs here show up as a symmetrical shadow on the ground. And I know that I'm lined up on the sun when I have those two knobs symmetrical with each other. This is a white light filter view with the Astrophysics 92 millimeter. This is taken with the ASI 294mm Pro camera, so it's a larger chip. But this was on May 17th, and you can see the large number of sunspot groups. And this image largely would represent what you would see visually. I have colorized the image though. Now when you switch to video mode, it's a cropped part of the sensor. So it is a smaller field of view and this is what the field would look like while you were scanning around. So this is video mode with the ASI Air using that 294mm Pro and a white light filter. 
I just wanted to show you what a field of view comparison would be if I was just taking a regular one shot snapshot versus a video. We're on vacation and have some time and it is miraculously quiet. This is the visual setup. I just go with the 40 millimeter Plossel, Teleview Plossel. I continue to use the diagonal. It's just a convenient setup for me. On this astrophysics, this is the focus point that I reach with the visual. And I'm using the ZWO ASI Air Plus. And we're at the beach. And I do not put a rejection filter on the front. And we are at equilibrium. You can see the green. The silver knob you see above the green light is a tuning knob. It allows for adjustments of 0.5 angstroms plus or minus with detents every 0.1 angstrom. I leave it set in the middle. When making adjustments to this tuning knob, you have to let the heating element settle down for 5 to 10 minutes. That's why I leave it set in the middle. And while we're on the subject of angstroms, angstroms are what dictate the type of hydrogen alpha quark filter you're going to get. When Daystar categorizes their filters, the 0.8 to 0.6 angstroms are classified as prominence filters, and the 0.5 to 0.3 angstroms are classified as chromosphere filters. Now remembering that you have the tuning knob with 0.5 angstroms plus or minus adjustment and you can see where you can get some overlap. So I went with the chromosphere after consulting with Dave Barrett at High Point Scientific and have found that to be a wonderful option for solar surface detail as well as prominences. Now I'm going to show you the Daystar Quark in the setup at the beach on vacation last week but this is just another view of it. This is the, the eyepiece itself. It has all of the components of the filtration. What I hope you can see here, and you'll see it in the video in a second, is this green light. So the Daystar quark is powered. It re it, the quark responds better. It stays on wavelength better when it's warmed up, it's heated. So there's a heating element inside the eyepiece. I have it attached to my lithium ion battery and it will be either yellow amber when it's not on plane with a wavelength or it'll turn green and in this case we are green that means we are good to go there may be scenarios where you do not need to apply the heating element i was at the texas star party and left the eyepiece outside and the eyepiece was already warm and as soon as i put the eyepiece on the scope it was on wavelength So I've transitioned. I like to get a good view of the sun in white light so I kind of know what to expect. Of course, you can always check spaceweather.com for live or pretty up-to-date, accurate views of the sun, especially in white light. But now I've transitioned. I always like to look through the eyepiece first when I put the quark eyepiece in, just to get a feel for the sun. Now, when I have the eyepiece in, at the 40 millimeters with this 500 and some millimeter focal length telescope. Remembering that this Daystar Quark eyepiece, chromosphere eyepiece has a 4X Barlow in it. I see about 25, 30% of the solar surface at one time. And everything is fairly uniform in red. It will present both the surface detail. We're seeing filaments, sunspots. I don't see any flares today but you can see flares, whiter spots, hotter spots, and prominences, plenty of prominences today on the surface. I'm gonna to try to image those, but I'm not sure what we might get today. Looks like our seeing is starting to deteriorate. But I always like to look visually. A couple of things, you always wanna make sure that the quark is thermally stable with the green light indicator. We're all good there. We have a great view of the, the sun visually. I enjoy these views, it just gives you a lot more dynamic in, uh, experience with the sun versus a white light filter. In this case, this is a 92 millimeter aperture, so I don't put a rejection filter on the front. The rejection filter is in the diagonal, and you're going to see that in the video here in a second. It's important to note that Daystar recommends the use of an energy rejection filter 
end scopes over 80 millimeters in aperture to prevent damage to the eyepiece. In my case, I use an Optolong UV IR filter in the nose piece of the diagonal. This is the visual setup with the Daystar Quark and now I'm going to transition over to the 174mm camera. So the 294mm Pro is a fantastic camera for deep space objects, but for video grabs, it's very important to have a camera that emphasizes frame rate as well as the way the shutter is read out. So this has a full shutter readout and this 174mm camera, although the chip is smaller, it is much better for video grabbing and for solar surface detail and prominence detail capture. And then the only thing I do is substitute the 40 millimeter eyepiece with the 174mm for capturing images. And the, the focus is about the same. It's just a, tweaked a little bit. So let's see what we're getting on the disc here today. Okay, so we have focus achieved and I'm also connected to the Ioptron CEM40, which gives you real-time ability to scan the solar disk and look for features and try to come up with an exposure that gives you just a little bit of a feel for some of the prominences that are on the disk. But yet you could probably see some solar flares if they're also presenting. So we're just gonna scroll around the disk and this is the what I like about this setup to be able to remotely control in the shade I'm sitting here in the shade and to be able to remotely control the scope to search the disk for interesting features well we finally have a prominence that I'd like to really try to animate and this is on Wednesday morning August 3rd everything is connected on the iPad we are capturing 10 second videos and you can see here I'm about 15 to 17 frames per second writing it directly to the EMC EMMC hardware I'm using the tool here, the crosshair tool, to help keep this prominence somewhat centered in the frame so my alignments can work uh, later when I stack the individual videos to give me individual frames to put in the animation. This is what we're doing today. I hope this works out. If not, I think we'll get a nice, uh, I've already done a shorter sub exposure for the surface of the sun. I'll go back and show you how we do this. So we're just gonna capture this 10 seconds here. Try to give our, that's 170-ish frames to work with. And then we're at about 58 milliseconds, but we need to go down all the way to about nine or 10 milliseconds to really get the surface. And we'll capture our 10 seconds there. And then we simply Go back to our 58 millisecond and continue our capture for our, hopefully, our animation. This video is giving you a little feel for some solar observing, some of the features you can see if you're new to it, what white light views would look like, and what the Daystar Chromosphere Quark eyepiece could do for both visual and, it's hard to show the visual side of it, but for visual and as well as video grab and capture. Again, we emphasize, be safe when using solar observing equipment. I can also make the mistake of moving a filter out of place yet not moving the scope away from the sun. Don't do that. Be safe. 
be sensible, use the right filtration, and use the filtration properly. But I hope you find this video of use. The Daystar Quark Chromosphere has been a joy to me while the sun is in its very active phase, enjoying these hydrogen alpha views of the surface, the chromosphere, the filaments, the solar flares, the sunspots, as well as um, the, the prominences. So hope you enjoy this and take care and clear skies. Guys, we're gonna try to get this well. Things are quiet. Do you realize how hard it is to get something done with no noise? We are at June 18th. I'm doing some solar imaging and this will be the next video that I update. That's the day start. So much for that.